1979, um, Mother Teresa, St. Mother Teresa, or St. Teresa of Calcutta, or Kolkata, try to keep up, a uh, lot going on. Um, St. Tr Teresa received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979, so quite a bit ago. And during her acceptance speech, she told the following story. She was in her convent there in Calcutta, as it was called at the time, and a man came to her to say that there was a starving family, a Hindu family, a wife and eight children, or a mother and eight children, and they were starving. They, they, they were destitute. <clears throat> so no sooner did Mother Teresa hear this than she gathered together a couple of measures of rice and off she went to the family. So she arrives at the, this, this Hindu family and she says, I have this, this gift for you. And the family are gracious and they welcome her in and they, they sit her down. And then Mother Teresa notices how the Hindu mom takes the rice, whatever it was, a couple of kilos of rice, she pours it out, she divides it in half, puts it into a bag and leaves. And then comes back a short time, short time later. And Mother Teresa just asks, well, sorry, can I ask where, where did you go with the rice? And the lady, the Hindu lady answered, well, our, our neighbors are starving too. They're, they're Muslim friends of ours. So I just gave half to them. And Mother Teresa, when she recounted this, she said, not only was it amazing to see the generosity of this woman who was poor. So whatever now, like they have rice for today, but they may not have rice tomorrow because she's just after giving away half of the little that they had. But so not only was, was she amazingly generous, not only did she learn how, had she learned how to love until it hurts, but the fact that this Hindu woman was aware in her own hunger and in her own suffering, she was aware of the fact that someone else was hungry and suffering. It's well like when, you're, when, when we can be kind of oppressed by our own crosses and problems, we begin to see less and less of other people's suffering because we're so focused on our own. You know, we're going to be so kind of uh, interior focused, my problems, my hurts, my wounds, my past and so on and so forth, that we, we don't see the suffering of others. I mean, imagine if you're actually hungry every single day. Your focus will be on, I have to fill the stomach or the, the stomachs of my children, but the neighbors, they're not my responsibility. So Mother Teresa, like, she, she was just, I'd say, amazed, not just at the woman's generosity, but at the fact that she was aware this other family needed help too, and then immediately acts. All of us have received so much from God. And because we receive it freely, and because God doesn't demand that we pay him back in some way, uh, all, this, all these things that we, we receive, we might even begin to, to take for granted. Because... You know, we, we grow, we're up in a country where it's safe, no one is bombing us, no one's trying to invade us. We can practice our faith relatively freely. Uh, we have food in our stomachs, we have heating, we have indoor plumbing, we have uh, you know, all the services and entertainment we could want. Uh, I remember um, I visited a family years, this is what, 20-ish years ago, less, 19 years ago, a uh, family in Switzerland, right, where the standard of living, especially yeah, Ireland, Ireland has, has kind of caught up in the meantime, but at the time, the standard of living in, in Switzerland was, was pretty, pretty, pretty amazing, much higher than we had here, you know, so um, there was a, a, again, relatively poor family who lived in a three-story house in the mountains, surrounded by snow-capped hills in the distance, snow-capped mountains in the distance, and green valleys and fields all around them. And the, the difficulty was, that because they had a lot of kids, would they be able to f afford uh, a second-hand Mercedes bus for, for them and the family, or would they have to go for like a Fiat? This is like, so, they, but they lived in what you would call Swiss poverty, right? They, they, were, they were relatively poor. But like, we're not talking starvation at all. You know, they, 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 I mean, they did recognize their blessings as well. They were a good, good faithful family. But as I say, like, their, their question was, do we get the Fiat Ducato uh, bus, uh, minibus for all of our kids, or do we, do we, uh, will we get the Mercedes, you know? So, so blessed, you know, and, and now we look at our country, our, our lives, we've been so, so, so blessed, so often. Even the things we have prayed for, so miraculous things, not just physical things like our, 
food and shelter and uh, safety and, and that. But we've been blessed by so many people in our lives. The people who have guided us to God, the people who've, who've affirmed us and built us up and educated us and taught us. Uh, that we've been blessed in so many ways through grace, right? And that's, that's the focus of, of today's gospel. The grace of forgiveness, for example, the grace of God's mercy. We've, we've received that so often, you know, where we messed up and God forgave us. You know, this isn't pointing the finger or blaming anyone else. We messed up, we got it wrong, and God forgave us because we asked him. Just these free gifts, they're just these, oh, so many things just freely given. God doesn't count the cost. It almost, I'm not, I don't want to give God advice, far be it from me, but if, if, if we did have a kind of a list, if we got a list every couple of months from God of all the things he had given us, maybe then we'd be a little more appreciative of it. Good genie, I didn't actually, I forgot completely about that. Didn't even notice that one. And uh, yeah, there was confession and confession, and then I received holy communion, right? Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity uh, on these occasions, obviously, for ourselves here. Ourselves here, thank God, it's daily. Do you know, but like, just gee, like, there'd be pages of stuff, pages, but because we just get it freely, I don't think we even notice half, half what God gives us. We've given, we've been, we have received without charge. And so the Lord asks us to give without charge. And this is where forgiveness comes in. And forgiveness is a tough one because keep in mind here, right? The person who's forgiving is innocent. If you're forgiving the other person, you're not the aggressor. So it's, it'd be kind of different, you know, how, how often must I, I, I ask for forgiveness if I've hurt someone, right? So if, if I've... Uh, used words that, that, that hurt people, if I've actually stolen from someone, uh, if I've actually defrauded someone, how often must I give it back or say sorry? Well, every time would be good. Okay, you're the aggressor, it's kind of your fault. Get over yourself, you know, you did it, right? You did it, it's your fault, you were wrong. You must try and make, make it good. But when we're asking for forgiveness, you're the innocent party. Okay, so this is like much harder, much harder. So the kingdom of heaven, I, when Jesus starts with any parable with that, with that expression, it's keep in mind what he's talking about. The kingdom of heaven is like this. Maybe compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with the servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed 10,000 talents. Keeping in mind, a talent was about 33 kilos of silver. In or around-ish a man's wages for a year. So 10,000 years wages. So if you earn 40 grand, 40,000 euro a year, multiply that by 10,000 and I run out of zeros. I don't know. It's lots. We're talking billions here. It's a, basically, the point Jesus is making is that it is an absolutely unpayable debt. Right? Like we're talking like, you know, if you own Microsoft, you may be able to make a dent in this debt. Uh, you know, it's phenomenal. Okay? 10,000 <coughs> years wages. No means of paying. So what does he do? He implores. The master says, give me time. Give me time. And I'll pay the whole sum. As we'd say in Ireland, you will, yeah. <laughs> You're like, 10,000 years wages. You will never pay that. Like, give me time. How much time do you want? <laughs> like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like, you, you will not pay that. You cannot pay that. But give me time. Give me time. So then not only does the master say, okay, I'll give you time. He's like, cancel your debt. The debt is gone. Why? Because the fella asked. That's it. The master, in fact the king, has absolutely nothing to gain by cancelling this man's debt. So he just, the guy just gets all of this for free. So remember, if, he, if, if the guy had this debt, what on earth was he doing with the money? Right? If he had 10,000 talents, he had taken this from the king. <laughs> That's where he got it. So I, he must have opened, owned half the country or like opened like 15 factories. I don't know. But like the, guy was, the guy was stinking rich. Must have been. Or incredibly irresponsible with money just to have wasted it. Where did this money go? Okay, and how on earth did he have this much money and not make anything back? Anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, it's, it's an interesting kind of a reflection. Like he, the guy gets all this money from the king. The king gets nothing back by cancelling the man's debt. Nothing. And yet he does so. Freely, 
<clears throat> grace freely given, gratuitously given. Right, so that same guy then <clears throat> leaves the king's presence and sees a servant who owes him pennies in comparison, 100 denarii. So 100 denarii is 100 days' work. <clears throat> so it's about like a third, little less than, a, it's about a quarter of a year's wages. So if you're on 40,000 a year, it's about 10,000 euro-ish. So 10,000 euro. It's not nothing, but it's definitely payable. I mean, you sell your car, you sell an ox or a horse or whatever else you have. I mean, you, you, you'd pay the debt, you, you'd manage it. The guy throttled, right, the, the, the servant who had been forgiven at this unthinkable, unthinkably huge debt, throttles him, throws him into prison until he, until he pays it. Now, can, can, you can immediately see like there's something very, very wrong here. Okay, the, the man who had this enormous debt got off scot-free. Now, if he's been the beneficiary of this kind of mercy and this kind of love, should that not teach him? If, if, if I was so relieved that my family don't have to be sold, that my possessions don't have to be sold, if I was so just... The feeling of, I've actually been forgiven. This, this weight, is, this debt is lifted off me. Should I not do the same for others? Should I not do the same for... I, I've experienced what this is like. It's like every, every time someone maybe compliments you or thanks you, and you think, wow, it's nice to be thanked, isn't it? It's nice to be appreciated. And then someone serves you your tea, and you're like, get out of my sight. <laughs> you know. Uh, but, sorry, you, you know what it's like to be to be thanked and you know it feels good so do that to someone else in turn you know you've been the beneficiary of someone's gratitude do the same do the same so anyway the the the, the king sees this this injustice and, and calls the first servant to task on it you wicked servant i cancelled all the debt of yours when you appealed to me were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant just as i had pity on you he's talking to you and you and i the Lord is talking to you and I. We have received the Lord's mercy so often. We've received the Lord in the Holy Eucharist so often. We've received so many also physical blessings. Look around us. We live in a mansion here. Food in our stomach and we have so much food in the fridges that they're bursting. Uh, thank God. We've been so, so blessed. So are we not bound then to show the same kind of love, the same, to, to, to be as giving with others, to be as forgiving? towards others in the same way that we have been forgiven. I wouldn't recommend this, but imagine if you had a t-shirt and on your t-shirt were written all of your sins. So everyone would see you go, oh, Jenny. <laughs> right? And they're there, they're there, just all written there. I think it would kind of humble us, no? I think when you'd meet someone, you'd be kind of, just, just, you know, you'd be, like, you wouldn't want people to see them. Like, they're, they're there anyway. They're on your soul anyway. But the fact that other people would see them kind of listed. Father Paul, the founder of my community, told us years ago, he said we should live our lives as if everyone knew our sins. Because that will keep us humble. If, if, if everyone knew what we confess, that's why it's, it's such a privilege to be a priest-like, because you do actually see what people are like and what they struggle with and how they, they fight so bravely so often to overcome their difficulties. Very often as a priest, actually, it's very it's humbling to hear people's confessions and to hear, as I say, how, how bravely they strive for sanctity. But if I were to live knowing that everyone knows my sins, I think I would live a lot more humbly. To never feel like I can point the finger at the infidels around me. We have received at our charge. We must give without charge. We have been forgiven. We have been shown mercy. We must forgive and show mercy. Lord Jesus, make us merciful as you are merciful. Raise our hearts and minds above the injustices that we have experienced, that we may live like you, that we may live with hearts full of love, that we might recognize those who suffer around us, that we might recognize their needs. And Lord, as we have been blessed, may we be a blessing for others.
Amen.